former X Division champion and number 22 on PWP's top 25 of 2022, Mike Bailey here, and you are listening to Pro Wrestling Proverbs with Logan and Anthony. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this state of the pod summer. Is this summer or spring? Where, 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 where are we? Is this spring? We're, we're at the tail end of spring. We're heading into summer. Uh, where, we're, where we're living, it's finally getting to that uh, hot, consistently hot weather. It's like uncomfortably hot outside all day. Yes. Yep. Um, it's but- either uncomfortably hot or on the flip side, you've got the air running, you've got windows going, and it becomes nighttime, and you wake up to use the bathroom, and you're freezing. I say I like that. I'm call me weird. I I prefer like fall and winter compared to summer and spring here. I, I like I fall not, and I, not like, I like fall and winter. I like the sun, which is what I miss most in the winter, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, see, I can enjoy summer when I'm inside my nice house. Uh, or, or spring. Spring can be perfect when it's not filled with rain and deadly tornadoes. But, you know, if, if that's the worst we've got, I can't complain. It's a great state. Um, but, uh... But yeah, here, this is, this here is the we are. State of the pod, we'll call it yeah. uh, spring-ish 2024. We haven't done one of these since fall. Uh, we're yeah. still kind of just recovering from uh, all the work we put into the Owen Hart podcast. Uh, today's recording is his actual 25th anniversary of his death. Um, so please go back and listen to those two episodes as we try to pay tribute to his life uh, and, and go into inc- excruciating detail. Uh, yes. Uh, of, every, of every little detail that happened. Uh, that week, that day, the months and years after, uh, you learn you learn a lot about the hearts. Uh, yes. How this how this tragedy and combined with some people's uh, reaction to Montreal uh, kind of tore apart the Hart family. Uh, but we're moving on. We're going to the other. Uh, the the light at the end of the tunnel is here. No more tragedy to talk about, really. Uh, we got a lot coming. Yeah, up. we've 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 hit we've we've hit all the big ones. Uh, we've done the Benoit. Talked about um, the Von Erichs. Oh, I've got more to men- talk about. Uh, no, let's. Let me pull up the the Google no. Doc real quick. Hold on. I can even give you a little uh, little taste. So I, got I know Eddie's one. Um, let me see. Okay, we already did all these ones. Uh, the steroid trial we could do. Yeah, that's, that's always a fun one. Um, we can talk about WCW. WCW. I don't really count those as tragedies, though. Like, <laughs> we'll, 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 I'll be I'm able to have. About, a... I'm, just, I'm just talking about like. Uh... I'll be able. To... I'll be able to have a good conscience if I laugh at those videos. Yeah. You know, maybe try not to maybe, laugh at the. Maybe that's what we need. Other life. Some more. Laugh at tragedy. Yeah. That well, horrible things that happen to people that we can laugh at, like the steroid trial, like the fall of a multi-million-dollar company, or even this other one I had written down there. I'd like to do one day, a collision in Korea. That seems like a fun thing to make fun of. Hmm. Well, those are all for Warrior Hawk almost got stabbed. <laughs> if it would have made a better podcast if they did. All right, you, you know what? You know you know it's a real tragedy. What I know, I already, I, I know what you're gonna say. You know what I'm gonna say? Yeah. What happened to Ric Flair? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Well, that that bartender should have got out of his fucking way. 
Oh my god. So Do what should we should we I, play the video for the for the audience here? Let me just give let, we can, but let me give a little background on it. I mean I've been a Ric Flair defender. I've been a Hulk Hogan defender. Not on everything. Not on everything. Well, I'm trying to type in Ric Flair incident, and there's airplane, traffic, and road rage in that autofill. Of course. So, and that's not even the well, ones we're um, looking for. Yep, I've, I've defended Hogan in some of his stories he told, not the more recent ones. Those have gotten crazy. And uh, of his in-ring work. Uh, Ric Flair, I've defended. I, I was super excited about the last match. We went. We had a great time. You know, I, I wasn't even upset that I almost didn't get to meet him after paying X amount of money. Um, I'm sure I would have been, but at the time I was trying to keep cool. Um, but I, I tried to defend Ric Flair, and I think, I I really think, because he, he's been going on a slippery slope past year, two years. Um, about the time that I think it really all started was when um, he thought Nick Khan disrespected him. Do you remember this? <laughs> no. Because they were, well, they were editing the opening video and they didn't oh. have the woo in the package. Right. And he blamed Nick Khan because it couldn't have been. And then he said Triple H doesn't answer his calls. And he says Aaron Anderson doesn't answer his calls. And I have no friends. And, and yeah, that was, a, that was a slippery slope time. But I think it started just nosediving. Uh, when he showed up in AEW, in my opinion. Because I think they gave him such a big head, and he thought that, he, like, he, he honestly thought he was a big part of Sting's retirement. Which he wasn't. I think Tony Khan just wanted Sting, Ric Flair, Tony Schiavone in the Greensboro Coliseum. Yeah. And to do that, they used the Woo energy, which I think they still are using on screen but if you've noticed once sting left there's been no brick flair even though he kind of insinuated that once sting left he'd, he'd be helping AEW because that's what he wants to do he wants to help the younger talent um people like to point out when punk came to AEW that that's when cabana left i'd like to point out that when flair came to AEW, that's about the time that Arn anderson left We're we're just putting I, it together, I, you know. We're not saying that, uh, yeah. But we're just, you know, we're we're connecting dots. You know, we don't want to get uh, cause a fight at and, a and press he, conference and, later, you know. And, and he's such a shill, <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's such a shill for money too. Which you, I mean, you gotta be right with all this alimony, all these credit cards. He's admitted he's lived above his means since the eighties. Um, but I've seen him. I've seen insurance. I've seen dick pills. I've seen ones where, as he's talking about Woo Energy, he's talking about sponsoring adult diapers because he's old. Like, what the fuck? Like, th this isn't the same Ric Flair of the 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, where he had respect for himself. And when he came back to WWE, there seemed to be a little respect for himself. Really? This this is reminding me of like I thought so, like how he presented himself. He wouldn't just put himself on anything. He kind of watched what he said in the media. This is reminding me of some TNA slash Ric Flair last match shit, where he's like, "Oh, I'm Ric Flair. I can do what I want. Oh, nobody respects me because I'm God." Um, before we get to the video, I found a <laughs> thing that he said to Dutch Mantel. Because uh, uh, it, it was announced that Ric Flair had a heart attack at his last match. Like a doc, um, they did they did test and he had a heart attack and they said it was around that time. Um, Dutch Mantel has said numerous times that he thinks Ric Flair was going to die in the ring. He wants to die um, in the spotlight. I don't like Dutch Mantel. I talked about it before. I think Dutch Mantel's be shit. Um, but well, here's Ric Flair's response to him, and tell me if this just doesn't sound <laughs> just like an egotistical dick. Dutch, I'm so happy to admit that I agree with every comment you made about me. I was lucky to not die of a heart attack in the ring during my last match. But you're right. 
I do want to die in the limelight. I've been in it since I was 15 years old. I'm 75 years old now. Still in the limelight and still the main event. Of what? Jessel Poppet, MD, was the doctor who diagnosed me with a heart attack. Most credible surgeon in Tampa. FYI, it's a bitch being the star. Like, he didn't need to respond to Dutch. He's a main event of what? This is the, what... the show he paid to put on? Yep. Or his son-in-law paid to put on? Yeah, yep. congratulations. The same son-in-law who said he would never do a podcast with Thrick Flair again because he can never get Rick to just sit down and do a podcast. <clears throat> what you get for marrying into that family, my man? And like I said, I feel I feel awful because he's one of my favorites. But some of these anti like, like and and I and I said at the beginning I defend him and Hogan quite a bit. Hogan, except for telling those crazy stories, which you agreed with me, you got to chalk part of that up to age and the drugs and the headshots. Um, but he just got rebaptized. He's trying to be good in life. He does the beat shop, and you always see these great videos of kids walking into him and putting promos on him. And you know, I actually I, I hate those videos too. If I'm being honest, with what? You. Like that? Like I'm the one I'm thinking of specifically is the one kid that goes in there and talks like him and cuts the promo and then rips his shirt, or whatever. And he's like, "What you gonna do, brother?" Sex. Yeah, I mean, dude, you, you weren't I'll, even fucking let, alive. Let me tell you something, brother. This, you weren't even alive the last time Hogan laced up his fucking boots, dude. Like, get out of here. Your dad is making you do this. Like, in five years, you're not even a fuck who Hulk Hogan is. I guarantee it. The, 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 the second this kid sees his first pair of tits, it does not matter. Hulk Hogan is... You ain't you don't give no shit about Hulkamania. He wasn't there. I do. I do. Hulk, Hulk, if you hear me, I drink my milk, and I take my vitamins, and I... I'm yeah, you, you were alive when he was actually kind of active. Like, yeah. I, like, if you're, like, in your 30s or 40s and you watch this fucking guy growing up, Whoa. I get it. Whoa. Not there yet. Almost. We're kicking it down there, bud. Not Sorry. there yet. It's all right. But, um, but, but the point was, you know, Hogan kind of... He, when people call him out in the media, he's not instantly responding anymore. He's not a... He's kind of just rolling off into the sunset, right? While Ric Flair here... And it's one of those things where I get a notification on Twitter and I see Ric Flair's name on it. I, I don't want to look. <laughs> because it's either he's going to be dead or there's going to be some shit like this. Could be anything. Yep. Um, but, yeah, if you want to play the clip, this... It... <sighs> All right, this is uh, Ric Flair gets into a fight and bar kicked out. At a bar and kicked out. Raw footage uh, from Justin Anthony 86 who I think is the OG uploader, I think. Yeah. I wasn't going to play Ringside News' this clip of it, that's for sure. They can go fuck themselves. Uh, so here, let's see if we can hear. I don't know if they'll come through clearly. There's, I'll try to provide audio subtitles, what it was called. I well, I've been there wrong. Said, spend money and put this place over and bring my family and friends here. That is bad for you. Why would it be bad for you? Well, watch social media tomorrow. Second dick. Well, you better. I don't get stuck with my What's your name, Nick yeah. Job? Nicholas what? Yeah. Nicholas Dickhead. You don't have to call me like that, sir. Don't ever talk to me. Nicholas you Dickhead. You don't have it sounds to like me. To me. If you really <laughs> mean my family. I'm not from you. I didn't do one You're thing wrong. I walked into the bathroom. And and you were like my kitchen manager. Uh, the guy at the other side of the bar, for those listening, um, is getting irritated with Ric Flair. How did I cost him? Did I touch him? Trust him. You said. I was awake uh, that night in Detroit. I would have almost been the guy at the other end of the bar. I didn't say one cuss word. Okay. Hey now. No, ma'am, I'm going to give you a thousand dollar tip just to say to him, kiss my ass. And 
You walk outside here. You don't have to be disrespectful to me, sir. We're being I know. You are being You're disrespectful to me. How am I disrespectful? Tell me to leave. I'm not telling you to leave. We're just telling you that you're cut off. Oh, I'm cut off and I'm not really? <laughs> yes, sir. What do you think his family thinks about it? <laughs> oh, dad. <laughs> oh, dad, he's had a little too much to drink this time. He's never like this. I never I got I I'll say it again. You're a dipshit. I'm leaving. Trust me. I won't come back yet. Come on outside here and talk to me like a man. I'm not going to do that because I'm on the car. <laughs> you are. You are the pussy clock. The pussy <laughs> clock? <laughs> hey, you want to go out and talk with me in the park? I don't work here. I don't give a shit. Dude, that guy wants to kick Ric Flair's ass. Yeah. What's that? I need one of those little bar straws for the next one. Do you know how many? Just one. Just one? I'm not mad. I have no reason to So I guess this all stemmed from <laughs> Ric Flair thought that the cook or the bartender, someone, was in the bathroom too long. And he thought he's disrespecting his family. Like, what the fuck? And clearly he is way beyond drunk because the, one of the first things he says is he put the restaurant over. <laughs> All right. You're not in a promotion, Rick. Get out of here with that. <laughs> Just less than one thing I always fucking hate about wrestlers is they can't drop the fucking slang in normal conversation yeah. with regular people. Like, uh, like gimmick. Or is it gimmick? Well, so... I know I talked about Hogan before, but he said, you know, he, he's starting to adjust where if someone calls him Terry, he talks to him normal. He doesn't throw brother in the sentence. Um, you know, the bandana's off, but it's when people call him Hulk or Hogan, you know, the bandana's on and he brings up the voice, dude. I don't think Ric Flair has that separation. No, I think what's more annoying, people doing that, like talking to, like using wrestling terms to non-wrestlers, or The Rock, when he's doing like a little like Instagram video, he has to explain what a heel or whatever is. Oh, yeah. He'll use a term and then explain it. That's also annoying. He's, an, he's a historian. <laughs> True. He just, he just loves but. the business, my man. But um, I brought that up because, yeah, like I said, I don't think Flair has that separation. Like, he's always, always Ric Flair. The only time that he stopped being it for that little bit was after his heart attack. And then that's when a lot of people thought he calmed down, which he did until people started putting him in the limelight again. He was, he was used in the Batista Triple H feud. He was <laughs> used in Randy Orton, you know, punting people. Now he's in AEW with Sting, or he had his last match. Now he's in AEW with Sting. Like, he's getting a big hat again. Supposedly and, he had his last match. You never know. I, I, I know he's not listening, but uh, if he or a fan of Ric Flair's does listen to this, Ric Flair, I do love you. I, you're you're one of my favorites, but uh, just stop. I'm indifferent. You don't want him to stop. Oh, yeah, all right. You know, you, no, you said you're one of my favorites. I was just saying I'm indifferent about him. Oh, I can take it or leave it. He, right. he just needs to. You need to stop with what he's like. <sighs> So one of these days he's going to get his ass kicked. Uh, he almost is, did there. This is a bad time to say that this episode is sponsored by Woo Wings and Woo Energy. <laughs> I wonder if, if there's a list of Ric Flair sponsors. 
Just to give an idea, because I'm sure it sounds like we're making some of this shit up. Um, but Wu Wings is real. Um, Wu Energy is real. He's got a cannabis brand. I'm pretty sure he's part of Powerbomb Pizza. I mean, I'd assume he is. I don't know. I just... He needs to just... Oh yeah, his cannabis stop. brand, what's it called? The Ric Flair Drip? Yeah. His net worth is still $500,000. I mean... Woo energy. Um, like I said, I really like him, but he just needs to needs to chill. <clears throat> Maybe one day he'll sign your magazine for you. That'll probably never happen. He oh. gave me that cool major bendy that was signed by him, though. And that photo. I did get the photo, and he was wearing the robe, and I did get to have the original big gold belt, so it was, it was worth it. Well, if you say so. Uh, but, uh... Maybe you, you know what? Him, maybe... You know what else is worth it? I was going to say, maybe you can meet him at like a convention somewhere. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe one day, meet him in Flint. If you were smart, he'd come to Flint and come to the the best Comic Con in the Flint metro area. I think, in my opinion, the best Summer Con in Michigan, maybe even the Midwest. We have to go to all the other ones to the side. If you think the if you... really cool Comic Con, they just had a guest announcement. I'm pretty sure. Let me pull that up for you real quick. It's always fun to go. Um, you'll hear a lot of people. Cause Michigan's got a lot of cons. Um, and they'll talk about how the Motor City Comic Con is getting real cramped. The Grand Rapids Comic Con is getting real cramped. I think the really cool con has just as much good merchandise and vendors as those do. Um, and it's really spread out. It's really well done. We found a lot of goodies last year. Uh did not help my wallet after WrestleCon and then SummerSlam and then really cool con. <laughs> yeah, this year, this year, uh, little Logan, like, uh, I might go a little bit more uh, hard. Yeah, hard on, I might, I might on, go a little crazy. Hard on the floor. <clears throat> Those pro wrestling um, figure vendors better watch out. <laughs> they better come stocked. Yeah. Uh, Ricochon did just have a guest announcement. Uh, back on they announced it on their discord so if you join their discord you get uh, first access to their guest announcements okay um, voice actor John Swayze oh he is the voice of a Borderlands character in Borderlands 2 and 3 Salvador it's a little yes a little machine gunner he's a he's a favorite of my dad's he was uh, all for one in My Hero Academia, uh, Undertaker in Black Butler. Undertaker? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> uh, Hohim in Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood. The Beast and the Boy in The Beast. Bulls in Akami Ga Kill. I don't oh. know a lot of these anime ones. Uh, he was a captain, he the captain in Halo Legends. You said he was the beast in The Boy and the Beast? Yep. I mean, that's a real good anime. Wow. That's, I mean, it, it's not wrestling related, but that's, that's a pretty big snag to be included. Uh, I mean, to well, be I assume Boy so. the Beast. He's, he's the, if he's their first announcement of the season so far. Yeah. Uh, he has to be a pretty big get. Um there's a couple of cosplay announcements. I don't know how how big the cosplay community is with this kind of stuff. Uh, there's I'm Achu, not too sure either. Achu cosplay. She started. <laughs> Thanks. 
Uh, <laughs> she started cosplaying in 2014, and she's well known for her transformation dresses. And she has experience with many mediums, such as making products, leatherworking, foam, and sewing. Uh, she came a long way hey, from yeah. where she started and hopes to continue to grow and expand her skills. I... Like you said, I don't know how big the fandom is for cosplay, but I do know that a lot of the cosplayers at these cons are just incredible. Well, yeah, some of these professional like, ones they bring in, like they have yeah. this other one, Paige Sickle. She, I'll send you a picture of her. She looks fucking okay. crazy. Uh, she's a dedicated yeah, cosplayer love... and prop make prop maker from Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, she knows Logan Paul. I always love the celebrity cosplayers, and then I love... There's always, like, two to three at each convention of people that just do huge... Uh, when we were at Astronomicon, someone was the main villain from Resident Evil... The most recent one, Resident Evil 8. True. Um, the big sister. It, it, it was crazy. I've seen people be the big daddy from Bioshock. Um, someone did a really cool Krampus one. I, I love seeing it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, like the one you just sent me, that page sickle. She, it's like the horns on her. It looks like a Maleficent or a dragon cosplay. It just, it's nuts. And I couldn't imagine the uh, time it took to make those and to make sure that they'd stay on your head. And then the patience of wearing the costumes. Because I mean, I know sometimes I'll get like pissed off that I'm wear. I've had a hat on too long. <laughs> So I couldn't imagine wearing something like that all day. I can't wear hats, but uh, yeah, I'll try. I'll try my best not to cry at the kids' cosplay contest this year. <laughs> God, I was, uh, there was something wrong with me that day. I was dehydrated, um, tired, not feeling. You're broken. I, I don't know. It was it was this girl in the Wonder Woman costume that just got me. I don't know. Maybe cry. But um, we we talked about really cool Comic Con a lot. We love we 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 loved the con. We we were very impressed. Much more impressed than I thought we would be. To be honest, um, we kind of look. I, I know when we went, it was kind of to wind down the weekend, and I mean, I kind of wish we weren't so tired when we went last year. This year, we'll be awake. We'll be motivated. Um, and you know. Thank him again for giving us passes for a second straight year. Yeah. And I mean the the other the the other big news the other big thing that we did um, is actually today day of recording. We were on another TNA media call. Yeah, Logan technically our first TNA one. media call because the last one was the Impact Wrestling one. Okay, we want to be technical. Yeah. Same yeah. company. But it was Will Ospreay that time and this time was PCO and opener of a lot of our programming. Speedball Mike Bailey. I was really hoping you would um you would ask a question, see if you'd recognize the Pro and Proverbs name. So the question I wanted to ask, and nobody said anything like it, um, both guys talked about evolving a lot, how the industry's changed. I wanted to ask them, since Mike Bailey has been in the New Japan locker room, Ring of Honor, TNA, DDP Pro, he shared the locker room with Rey Mysterio, PCO was in the WWF locker room in the early 90s, and the um mid to late 90s he was in the wcw locker room and he's been in the tna locker room when it started and tna locker room now how do the locker rooms compare um especially for pco being in the industry since the 90s but even for mike bailey how, how does the locker rooms compare now to then and i think we've got some pretty pretty cool insight pretty cool info i will say both guys because uh, I sat through, I sat through it. They were, I said it on our Twitter. They were very genuine. They answered all questions with a um, very good, thought-out response. I really liked Mike Bailey before this. I don't, I guess I never watched an interview for anything of his. But just the love he has for wrestling, I, I, I couldn't do anything but smile anytime he answered. Yeah, you. Actually, and then uh... PCO. 
He tweeted you back. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah, he thanked me. Yeah. But um, ECO talked about how Mike Bailey is, like, right on the cusp, right on the edge of being, like, a guy. And, I mean, that's pretty huge. Because, like I said, PCO, I mean, he shared locker room with Brett, Michaels, Hogan, Goldberg, AJ Styles when he was in TNA. I mean, he's seen a lot. Um, Back in my day, we were, all the guys were doing drugs in the locker room and I was playing video games. He did mention that he's glad that the wrestling um, aura atmosphere isn't the same as it was because he said it would make him quite upset when back in the day he'd see like Dynamite Kid just beat someone's ass because they were in his seat. So he, so he's glad that that's changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the era of fucking hard asses for no reason is over. Um, some some people are still refusing to give it up. I'm not going to name anybody names, but uh, you know who you are. Um, yeah, Ryback. <laughs> um, <laughs> not what I was going for, but sure. He is a real hard ass. But uh, yeah, it seems to the pro wrestling locker rooms. It seems, you know, obviously we've never really uh, been in one. Uh, but from experience, most people, 99% of people, except for Ronda Rousey, I guess, recently, uh, shouldn't have good experiences in most locker rooms. Yeah. Uh, and maybe anybody that's <laughs> been on the other side of punk uh, might also have a different <laughs> story. But that seems to be all cleared up now. Yes. Now sometimes you just gotta, you just got to choke somebody a little. And it's okay. I mean, some, sometimes people like it. Hey, uh, this is a PG-13 podcast at best, Logan. Oh, well, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I know. P- but, uh, PG-13. You, you know what? If they don't like the language that we're using on the pod, um, Luckily, there is other meat out. Hey, that's Not like, just spoken. That's that's like three transitions you've made to each topic here. I try. It's pretty good. But um, I we've talked about it before briefly that um sometimes I don't really have a set schedule, but sometimes on our Facebook I'll put some I'll put some written articles. Some written I I guess I can't I don't want to call them articles because then I don't always use sources. So I guess I'll just say written pieces on our Facebook. Um the two that I've done um the one which will be continuing is magazine memories. I mentioned it before, Zion, you know the Rizzler and his brother oh, yeah. Jesse, uh, their dad <laughs> had a bunch of and a bunch of old wrestling mags. And when I say old, I mean like from '83, I think is the oldest, um, through probably '91. And it's every wrestling magazine available at the time. I even got some cool programs that had some autographs in them. But I decided that I'd randomly just pick one. Flip through it, find an article, and kind of discuss it. Um, the ones that I've done, I talked about how it was when Randy Savage went to the WWF, and they thought Hulkamania was over. Yeah. Um, back in, like, 86, 87, yeah, Hulkamania over. Um, I also talked about Billy Jack Haynes and how he was pushed to be, like, the guy... Um, which is a little ironic because probably a month or two after that is when he got arrested. I don't know if you saw that in the media or not. Maybe. See a lot of people but, uh, arrested. And then I did one where it talked about drugs and wrestling. And it brought up uh, Mike Von Erich. Yeah. And that was the first one I did. Yeah, every so often they'll just appear. I mean, it's kind of whenever I get the itch or until I get a set schedule down. But uh, the one that I've put the most time into is actually from the first episode or the first um, part 
to the last part. It was roughly about a year, and I talked about Detroit's big time wrestling promotion. Um, it, it, it was the it was the big time wrestling promotion that made the Sheik and Bobo Brazil household names. Uh, the Fabulous Kangaroos, who was one of the larger tag teams of the era, spent a lot of time in Detroit. The Wild Samoans spent a lot of time in Detroit. Um, Big Time Wrestling was an overarching name. I'm pretty sure there's Big Time Wrestling in California. There's Big Time Wrestling in Detroit. Right now, um, the convention that I went to earlier this year and met Tommy Rich at was actually put on by Big Time Wrestling. Hey. But my main purpose of this was to let people know about what was here. Um, I, I mention it in all of them that, you know, WCCW is talked about all the time. AWA, Championship Wrestling from Florida, Georgia Championship Wrestling, Stampede, and... NWA Detroit, the big time wrestling, I think should have been talked about at one point, probably around the time that ECW is coming back because of the hardcore nature and how it almost established the genre, really. Um, it, it's really hard to find any media on this. I mean, there's a couple of YouTube documentaries, there's a couple of books. But well, it's kind of just lost to history. I think it's just lost, or does somebody own it and not put it out there? Big Time Wrestling, I'm pretty sure, would have been bought out. The uh, the Sheik stuff. Whether Vince bought it or the Crockett's bought Because at the time, everyone always blames Vince McMahon, right? But Jim Crockett did the same thing. He would buy promotions for like, libraries or for superstars and... Yeah, I go through there is five parts and one of the parts I split into three sections. Uh the first part I kinda give a little background. Discuss why I am doing these. I describe um, how important the territory era was, which I've talked about in the scriptures, I've talked about another podcast. It was our second podcast. Uh, yes. Of this generation, this era, this... The, the best, the only generation that matters now. Yeah. Uh, and then I give a little background on Detroit. Mention some of the big people there. How uh, Dusty Rhodes and Gino Hernandez both debuted there. Not debuted, but as in their um, younger days would appear there. I mentioned some of the other territories... That I learned about as I was growing up, you know, whether it be Memphis, California's big time wrestling, one in Puerto Rico. But after giving some background, it then go to part two, which is about the characters that defined the territory. Section A, I discuss characters in territories as well as the championship belts that are there uh, they kind of go hand in hand with each other and I, I tease you know if people want I can do profiles on people that I didn't include because I only, only really focused on the main ones Bobo Brazil and the Sheik for sure because they dominated the main event scene for the entire time and then you want to go to section B. I don't remember who I. Yeah, section B was the sheep and Bobo. So then it would have been section C. I discussed other people. You want to jump to? Yeah, I forget who. Oh yeah, I did the fabulous kangaroos. And then the fabulous kangaroos were a uh, legendary tag team at this era in wrestling. When I say this era. Probably late 60s to the early 80s. Um, still when it was regional wrestling. 
or Vince yeah, McMahon. Or uh, I mentioned it a lot. This this is before the big time, which is probably why it was lost. Um, not to mention with the Sheik and Bobo being your biggest talents. I mean, you don't have really any big tragedies like the Von Erics, and you don't have any like large Mount Rushmore superstars like Jerry Lawler at the helm. So it makes a little sense that it was lost to time. But as I said, those three those three sections made up the one part. Then I moved on to the championships more in depth. Kind of gave a little history. Talked about some of the big names. I mean, you wouldn't imagine it, but the final tag team championships were Giant Baba and Jumbo Saruta, the Japanese legends. Um, Angela Poffo and Lanny Poffo also came through Detroit and held the tag titles. Afon Sika, the Wild Samoans, Dusty Rhodes, even Rocky Johnson. And then you get to that United States Heavyweight Championship that the Sheik held. Um, Fritz Von Erich held it back in the day. Abdullah the Butcher, of course, Bobo Brazil. I found out that the Sheik actually took the title with him even after the promotion closed and would defend it in other promotions. I mean, I guess when you own the territory, <laughs> you can kind of do that. Yeah, you do whatever you want with it. It's just, it just crazy to me, some of the talent that came through. Um, part four, I talked about the end of the territory, how a rival territory kind of stole some talent, and how with the big wrestling boom coming, they kind of didn't evolve with the times. As I said, Bobo and the Sheik were the main eventers for a long time, but they never, they, you hear it today, but they didn't create any new stars. Woo-hoo-hoo. You can't just have these guys doing the same match over and over and over. Um, especially, I, I I didn't look into it, so I didn't put it in this. But I'm also wondering, because when the promotion ended in 1980, that's when some wrestling channels were getting syndicated. So they would appear across the U.S. So I'm wondering if once fans kind of caught wind of the WWF or the Crockett, or the AWA, if they thought that this was boring. They didn't like the formula. I don't know if that's the case, but the everything kind of lines up. Um, and then part five, I kind of, it's a, it's a little shout out to Michigan itself. I talk about how, you know, big time wrestling, you can still feel its impact today. I know that's cliche to say, because I say it about everything. But with the Sheik and Bobo being there, Abdullah being a mainstay, they really did create hardcore into what we know it as today. I mean, Abdullah used the fork. The Sheik always had a sharp object. He'd use his boots. I'm pretty sure they used chairs. There's a lot of blood. And plus, he trained Sable and Rob Van Dam. Um, And you can see a lot of him in Sabu. I then talk about, you know, the numerous independent promotions in Michigan and how it's not just indie talent appearing. Then last year we've seen Rob Van Dam, Devon Dudley, Rhino, and Matt Riddle all appearing in Michigan. Riddle's actually going to be appearing in Brighton um, coming up soon, facing Simon Gotch. And before Um, the event, Simon Gotch will bury Enzo Amore. Yeah, he will. (laughs) I then... I, I then talk about some of the larger um, events in the Mitten State. Of course, you know, Ron Garvin beat Ric Flair for the NWA Championship. WrestleMania three happened. I didn't realize that Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan for the title here in Michigan until I was doing research for this. Um I knew that the pay-per-view debut of Kurt Angle and John Cena happened here. John Cena's pay-per-view debut was on my favorite show of all time, Vengeance 2002. I it's, still think it, be, it has... That'd be a good podcast idea. We go, we review each of our favorite like all-time yeah. pay-per-views. That'd be a fun one. Let's see. Th- I mean, this one... If it doesn't scream Logan, it's got the Dudleys in a tables match. Carrero and Benoit are on the card. Rob Van Dam fights Lesnar. Jeff Hardy fights Regal. Hogan's there. 
And then it still has my favorite ending when The Rock's getting that three count and Undertaker tries to break it up and he just can't. Rock wins the title. It's still my favorite. I think it's the first one that I watched all the way through. Um, but then, I mean, even in recent times, there's been Adam Page joining the Bullet Club. That happened here in Michigan. I was at the show. Randy Orton won the Royal Rumble in 2009. The SummerSlam we just went to. Hey. Uh, Shane McMahon returning. As much as I hated it, that was pretty big. Um, and then I end it by explaining why I did it. Letting you know some books and uh, you know a YouTube channel to check out. Thanking the couple. I asked my wife's uncle, uh, the Rizzler's dad, and your dad about if they had any memories of big time wrestling so i kind of used that as a jumping off point but um i'm not really sure what i'll do next this is just kind of dipping my toes in the water just to put some written stuff out there you know some stuff next? that i mean what's next best new york times best-selling author logan keith I remember in college I wanted to do a uh, book on the history of Detroit wrestling, and then it turns out there was already one. Well, but uh, so that's kind of where this—that's kind of where this came from. Um, I mean, I guess that's where the podcast came from, huh? I guess Wanting so. to do something in college and realizing. <laughs> I guess we can't, but then we end up doing it anyway. Yeah, so, um, and we did it better than the one we're trying to do in the first place. Yeah. So I think if yeah. history repeats itself, you will sell more copies than that guy. So I would hope so. Well, like you said, there's not a lot of... I, I did some research. I didn't treat this like a research paper. Um, I didn't sit down with a pencil, and I, I would type it on my phone, and it's just as the thoughts come would come to me that's why usually there'd be one to two parts written at a time and then there'd be month-long gaps <laughs> um but it's just it's it's whenever i was like man i should write more on that and who knows what i'll do next who know i know at one point we talked about doing a, a michigan podcast we can reference this on it yeah but um long story short go to our facebook and you know you'll find some some written pieces. But, uh, now to close it out. I'm going to say, yeah, we go from one creation of mine to another. Logan's on fire. So we've tried streaming in the past. Um, We wanted to do a March Madness and like our March Madness the previous year, we did not finish it in March. Yeah, uh, we're all for ideas. two on March Madness. I, think, I don't think we're not. Doing, we're not doing any more March Madnesses. And at least not with the game. No. If 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 Pro Wrestling Proverbs says we're doing a March Madness tournament with WWE 2K, you'll you'll enjoy it for the first half, and then the <laughs> second half will never come out. Yeah. But um. <clears throat> But I like doing the live stream. Um, we kind of know we we kind of figured out what we we're doing, and it gives us time to kind of sit like on this podcast and you know shoot the shit. So, my thought was, if a tournament is too long, then why not do a Royal Rumble? But if we do a Royal Rumble, who would be in the Royal Rumble? And that's when it clicked. <clears throat> We've been, we've been doing this for what three ish years in this iteration. In this one, yeah. And I mean, we've got episodes from two others that probably could make up a year. So we've talked about a lot of people, right? Good, bad, and ugly. Why not have thirty men in the first PWP Rumble? And then the winner, good, bad, or ugly, will be our PWP champion. Prestige. 
And these people, like I said, it's good, it's bad, and it's ugly how we talk about some of these people. Um, just to just to give a little tease, uh, it references some, I mean, tribute videos we've done. It references some profiles. It references it references some people we've met. It represents someone that wouldn't give us an interview because his contract. It's got our triad of Vince Bray and Punk. I gotta find a Vince. And yes, I gotta, to, I gotta find a Vince uh, model now. He's not in the game anymore. And yes, there's a chance that the PWB champion could be one of my favorites. Braun Strowman, Shane McMahon, <laughs> or Nicholas. So there's Team, a little tease, just like the real Rumble. Reunited. Just like the real Rumble. Give you a little tease of... I just named six of the 30. A longtime fan should kind of be able to figure out... Uh, some of the yeah. others that'll be on here. Might be some surprises, but um, now we gotta just go through the catalog. Yeah, essentially dating back to our very first podcast ever, ever. Yeah, it'll be thirty men. It'll be a live stream. I would say probably within the next month. Good timeline before the Fourth of July. Before the Fourth of July. PWP Rumble to determine the first EWP champion. I know you said at the top of this that uh, we were kind of unwinding still from the Owen Hart uh, podcast. Sounds like we're going to have to wind back up with the really cool Comic Con coming up and the PWP Rumble. Well, I know. And there'll be, we, have, we, have, we have some stuff for in between. Oh, yeah, there'll be more. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah but, yeah. you know, those two, we got to wind up for them. And, I mean, as always, if you aren't already, like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Follow, like, subscribe, wherever you're getting your podcast from. And like and follow on X, Instagram, Facebook, the TikTok. And, I mean, people talk about Christmas in July. We do have an Etsy store. What would be a better stocking stuffer than a PWP shot glass? <laughs> well, you want, to be able to take some, you want to be able to take shots at your 4th of July cookout. You know, you're out, there on, we go. You're out on the grill, you know. Uh, out on the grill taking a shot of some uh, Terramana tequila. Talking about that PWP rumble. I mean... I can't think of a better way to celebrate America. The way America intends, intended to be honored. Uh, by a couple 20-some-year-olds talking about fake wrestling.